Well, because I, I love the Oz books. Mm. I've read all of them more than once. And I'd really love to know how they came to be written, especially the wonderful Wizard of Oz. I think you're talking about more than a few moments, young man. Well, I'll sit here as long as you will, Mrs. Baum. Well. <laughs> Wait there. Hello, Bunny. Hello, Papa. What are you doing out there? You told me, never play in the house with your razors. Well, that makes sense. Even though it is a little dangerous, isn't it? You're not going to fall. Just hang on. Don't look down. Listen to me. Did I, did I ever tell you about the magic land that was so very far away? It, it, it was so very far away, you, you could never get to it even by carriage or boat or train. You, you, uh, you had to fly there. Papa! Bunny, you're all right. Just don't look down. Listen to me. You had to fly to it in your house. But, but only if a wind came up, a big wind like a cyclone, could you, could you fly to it. But you, you had to hang on really, really tight. And it happened to a little boy once, just like you. He, uh, I'm all right. The little boy lived in a place where cyclones happened every year. His mama and papa, they were out when it happened. And the little boy was in the house taking a nap. And then the cyclone came and picked him and the house up and spun him around and around. And they finally landed in the magic land. What? Come here, sweetheart. Go to your mother. Go to your mother. Come here, Bunny. Would you like to hear a story? Yes, Papa. All right. This is a story about a witch. Do you think that's advisable just prior to bedtime? Oh, you're thinking all witches are bad, Mother Gage. Aren't they, Papa? Not at all. You see, it all depends on what part of the magic land a witch comes from. If she comes from the east, well, then she's a very wicked witch and hates everybody. But if she comes from the north, she'd be extremely beautiful and kind. Everyone in the magic land couldn't help but love her for her wisdom and for her beauty. What's your name? Dorothy. Well, hello, Dorothy. <laughs> Uncle Frank, why does he have a crow on his shoulder? Shouldn't he be scaring it away? He should, but he's not smart enough. Scarecrows can be smart. Well, they can if they have a brain. Can a scarecrow have a brain? Well, sure, son. But this one doesn't. You know why? Why? Well, come here, why? kids. I'll tell you. <clears throat> it's because the farmer never gave him one. What farmer, Mr. Baum? Hello. Can I show you something today? The little farmer in the magic land. 
The magic land that you have to fight you in a house? That's right, but, but that's another part of the story. The part I want to tell you is why the scarecrow has no brain and why he couldn't scare the crows away. You see, when the farmer made the scarecrow's head, first he made a nose for it. Then he painted ears on the scarecrow's head. And as soon as he did that, the scarecrow could suddenly hear all the sounds of the farm. Then the farmer dipped his brush again into the magic paint and he painted eyes on the scarecrow's head. And when he did that, the scarecrow opened them and looked right at the farmer. And then the scarecrow looked at everything else around him. He was very curious because this was his first glimpse of the magic land. Then the farmer painted a mouth on the scarecrow's head. And what do you think? You'd think he would talk. But he couldn't. He couldn't talk because he didn't know what a mouth was for. So he didn't say a word. The farmer propped the scarecrow upright in his cornfield, fixed his vest, then looked at his creation one more time. No sooner had the little farmer walked away. I wonder why the farmer ever thought he'd fool me with you. Well, can't you talk? I, I guess I can. So all you're ever gonna do is talk. You'll never scare a crow away, that I guarantee. Why? Because you haven't got a brain in your head. The farmer forgot to give you one. Ha, ha, ha. Frank? 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 What? We need to talk. Oh. Sweetheart? Uncle Frank is here. Hello, Uncle Frank. How are you, darling? I'm coming. Uncle Frank, will you tell me some more about the magic land and the little boy who flew there in the house? I would love to tell you about that. I'm gonna go get you something else to drink. Dorothy? I've got a secret I have to tell you. Poor Uncle Frank. It's just between you and me. It really wasn't a little boy. It wasn't? It was a little girl. And her name was Dorothy. She was born in the Dakota Territory, just like you. And she lived with her <coughs> Uncle Henry, who was a farmer, and the farmer's wife, whose name was, um... Emily? Uh, what? Emily? How did you know that? Except they didn't call her Emily. They called her M for short. Well, you know how the little boy, I mean the little girl, whose name was... Dorothy? Flew to the magic land in her house. <coughs> she met the good witch and the bad witch and the little people and the scarecrow, right? Mm-hmm. Now I'm going to tell you the story about the next person Dorothy met in the magic land. Uh... He was a man, completely made out of tin. Tin? Yes. Nothing but tin. From the top of his cap to the tip of his toes. 
and he lived in a little cottage in the forest. Oh, he was a wonderful sight to see, Dorothy. He shone so brightly in the golden sunlight that it blinded you if you looked at him. Once in a while, he had to oil an arm or a leg. But he didn't mind that. He would have been the happiest tin man in the world, except, except that the tinsmith forgot to give him a heart. He had no heart. I don't know, maybe he was lucky, Dorothy. That way, his heart could never break. Oddly enough, the tin man didn't like to chop down trees, so he always patted them and thanked them before he had to strike them with his ax. The problem on this particular day was that the sky grew dark. The tin woodsman should have gone back inside his cottage, but he had so much work to do that he hadn't paid attention to the sky. And before he realized the danger, it began to rain and rain and rain, and all his joints began to rust until he couldn't move. Another part of the story about a lion who was a total coward. He didn't know why he was a coward. It's a mystery to me. I suppose I was born that way. I learned, though, that if I roared very loudly, that every living thing would be frightened of me. enabling yourself to sell that product to your customer. That Sullivan is a total humbug who manages to sell himself to almost everyone. Total humbug. Total humbug. Thereby enabling yourself to sell that product to your customer. Frank! Frank Jr.! What, Papa? Come inside. I want to tell you something. A story? Yes. Bring your brothers and your friends. Come on. Dorothy's house was caught in a cyclone yes. and it flew oh, to the magic yes. land uh -huh. and how it came down with a big bump <laughs> that if she and her little dog had not been lying on the bed they might have gotten hurt yeah I remember it 
It's all right, Toto. Don't be scared. You remember how she came out of the house and found herself in this beautiful land? Look, Toto. Remember, I told you how she met these four little people who welcomed her to the land of the munchkins. What I didn't tell you was that when Dorothy's house came down, it landed on a wicked witch and killed her. The one you told us about, Papa? No, no, her sister. Now Dorothy found herself in mortal danger because the witch's sister, who was also a very mean, evil witch, wanted revenge. Now there was only one thing Dorothy could do to save herself. What? 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 She had to go and see the wizard. What's a wizard, Papa? A wizard is a very powerful magician like Merlin in King Arthur, although this wizard is a little different, as you'll find out. So because Dorothy had to find the wizard and ask for his help, the munchkins put her on a road that was paved with bricks, yellow bricks that looked like gold. Dorothy and her little dog began to walk along the yellow brick road to see the wizard. It was going to be a very long, long journey because the magic land was so big. Mr. Baum? Yes? You always call it the magic land. Doesn't it have a name? Of course it does. It does what? What is it? It's a very strange name that, um, um, let me concentrate for one moment and see if I can remember it. Um, the, um, the name of the land that Dorothy flew to is... Oz, the land of Oz. Oz, 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 Oz. Oz. Steam? I'm oh, afraid so. Yeah, well, let's take a breather then. Mr. Denslow? Uh, William, please. William. There's another book I have in mind. It's a story I've been working on for a number of years. I, I've, I, I've told parts of it to some children who genuinely seem to enjoy it. 
Does it have a title? Well, I'm, I'm calling it now The Emerald City. What's it about? There's a little girl named Dorothy who lives in Kansas. And one day, in the middle of this Kansas prairie, there's this huge cyclone. And before she knows it, picks up her house. She's in the Is that it? That's very close. Maybe I think a little rounder. Think. That's it. That's Dorothy. around the lion's neck and kissed him, patting his big head tenderly. Mm -hmm. Then she kissed the tin woodsman who was weeping in a way most dangerous to his joints. But she hugged the soft stuffed body of the scarecrow in her arms instead of kissing his painted face and found she was crying herself at this sorrowful parting from her loving comrades. The success of the book transcended anything we could possibly have dreamed. Within two months of its publication, the initial printing of 10,000 was increased by 25,000, then in another month by 30,000 more. By January 1901, a total of 90,000 copies had been printed of a book Frank had hoped might sell 2,000 copies in a year. Sales of all American editions as of 1939 are close to 4 million. I have no idea how many copies have been sold in foreign editions. Frank went on to write 13 more books about the Land of Oz, which were also successful as was the musical play he wrote in 1902 and the silent film he wrote and produced in 1910. The remainder of my years with Frank were full and happy ones, but all too brief. By May of 1919, his heart was just too weak to go on. Goodness, the picture's starting. I have to go. I don't want to miss Mrs. it. Mrs. Baum, is it true what your husband said? That the wonderful Wizard of Oz would never have been written if it hadn't been for you? Young man, there was only one dreamer of Oz, and that was L. Frank Baum. <laughs> <laughs>